Welcome back to Murray's Minis. This week we have a high octane speed painting challenge. Can we paint an entire start collecting towel box in just seven hours in the grim dark style? Y yes, because the video says so. Um, False Peril is an incredibly contrived narrative device. This isn't MasterChef. F MasterChef. So to achieve this speed painting technique, we're going to be using a lot of Zenithal highlights with inks. We're going to be using a lot of contrast colors and we're going to be using oil washes, lots and lots of oil washes. So when you look at the way Games Workshop portrays the towel in all of their artwork, they're very clean, very clean lines. They look very pristine, a little bit of weathering, but that is completely contrary to my style. I love my models to look gritty, grimed up, bashed up. And whenever I see town models uh, on like the GW site, they just, they don't look nice to me. I like all of my models to look like they lived through 2020. Now, in spite of this being a grimdark speed painting tutorial, I wanted to create a good finish, something that you could have on display quite happily, but something that would be really impressive on the gaming table as well. Just because we're painting these fast doesn't mean we necessarily need to compromise a lot on the paint quality. So to get started, we go for a mix of black and blue Molotow ink. This stuff's really good. I use it for all of my undercoats, but in this case, I went for a very, very dark blue color as our base color because I wanted it to be the base of the white to give it a bluish tint and it's also the complementary color to all of our orange accents that will mean that we'll get some really nice dark colors. So our first Zenithal light will be a neutral gray. This will just establish our first highlights. We're gonna really plaster the Zenithal highlights on because I wanted quite a bright white, which then we could tone down with oils rather than having to build up white. I always find it's best to establish your highest, brightest values first and then take them down rather than having to add to them, especially if you're gonna do a grim dark style of painting. Trying to get a bright white after the fact is a lot more difficult than just establishing it in your first couple of passes. So now we're gonna be moving to titanium white. This will just be the top the Zenithal, probably take it from a little bit more than just a top angle, but just build it up gently. With inks, you need to be spraying on quite high pressure just to get it to dry. That way it won't spider web on you and you end up with all of those horrible, horrible marks. Let's face it, when painting in this style, all of the horrible marks we want to be putting on on purpose, not by accident, because you can cover up a lot of your bad painting with the grimdark style of painting, but that's not what we're going for. We're just basing in our values, we're getting the highest lights in there, but we're getting that definition already between our darks and our high tones. So that way we can see where we're gonna want to add in the colors and the tones with the contrast paints and with the oils. See, this uh, technique is essential. You need oil paints so much better. At this point, this took me about an hour and 15 minutes, which isn't too bad. So my first sort of accent color was going to be Grift Hound Orange. When using contrasts over inks for Zenithal highlights, it's best to really, really water these down. We don't want to use them the way they were marketed as a one coat paint. That's not what we're doing here. We are just tinting those colors to get a nice, consistent color. We don't want it to pull in the recesses. We don't want to be getting little coffee stains over it. We just want a nice flow. We want a consistent color that will tint it and turn it from that white gray to a lovely orange, but still retain all of that initial value information underneath it with the Zenithal highlights. You can see here I'm, I'm plastering it on, 
but because it's so well watered down and so diluted, it really will just flow over it and it will retain all of that information. But if you use it at a much thicker consistency, you're gonna get those horrible marks, those you know coffee stains, and it's just not gonna look right. Make sure you thin down any of your co contrast colors at this stage. If you, you wanna use acrylic inks, you absolutely can. I just find them a little bit harder to use for this job, especially when brush painting. And for this sort of finicky work, you could use your airbrush, but to be honest, the amount of time you'd have to spend masking it, cutting up masking tape, you might as well just brush paint it because this stage didn't actually take all that long. It probably took about 20 minutes to get all of these orange accent colors down. It's not that much of a time consuming job. So now we'll go for the dreaded ultramarines blue, shake this paint to within an inch of its life because I didn't for the first couple of passes and it just clotted and it looked absolutely horrendous don't do it shake it with an inch of its life water it down most of the contrast paints if you're going to be using in uh, this style you need to really really water them down i made a big error with the ethereal model i didn't water it down as much as i should have done and it really clumped in a couple of places and it took a little bit of work to correct it it still doesn't look how i would have preferred it to but once again, this is a speed painting tutorial. This isn't about getting everything 100% pristine. It's just about doing a half decent job, moving on, getting your models painted and getting them on the table. So I'm just nearly at the two hour mark for those accent colors. Now we're gonna be going in with basilicon and gray. These are gonna be for all of the pouches, the cloth, um, all of the other sort of accent colors. On the battle suits, there is a lot of this colour on them and on the warriors as well. Basically anything that's either cloth or mechanical that isn't white, that, this is what I used on it. So for the accent colours on just the symbols and a few bits and bobs, I just chose a brassy goldy colour. This was very, very watered down. In hindsight, I did it on a few parts but not all of them. Uh, I tinted them with orange first and that really really helped. Now we're moving on to the oil washes which is my favourite stage for anything. Plastering stuff in oil colour and then just wiping it away. You can see that I've used a lot, a lot of makeup sponges. These are really really good for getting a lot of this colour off um, and they're absolutely essential. You can use cotton buds but if you're going for like an all over wash like this and you're gonna be wanting, wanting to take the majority of it off, these are the tools to use. You can pick them up for relatively cheap. I got my wife to go get me these from a pound shop and they were like a quid for about 30 of them. But I'd always say go back in with your Q-tips as well. Get a little bit of white spirit on them and just take off the excess. So there were a lot of washes, so we're about four hour stage now. Now doing the bases, this is a really, really good trick. I used four different oil wash colors. Black just to all over wash, then browns on some of the other areas, and then a green and an ochre color. If you watch Luke's APS, he does a similar technique using just watered down acrylics on plaster rocks none of these were plaster rocks but if you use um, heavily diluted oil paints while they're all wet they will blend together and you have a fantastic result that looks really realistic really good so at this stage I decided I wanted to dirty and darken them up I probably could have saved myself the effort of this step if the blue wash I did was dark enough but I chose a very very rich saturated blue that was quite bright so i plastered this over absolutely all of them and instead of using q-tips or makeup removal sponges i just used my fingers and i wiped them off this created some really lovely dirty streaking and after i'd done that and i was happy with the streaks went back in with my cotton buds dipped in white spirits and just added in highlights I actually at this point even started removing a lot of the top of the orange just to give it a 
really scratched away dirty highlight. Now we were gonna be using white. This is just for the very, very um, sharp highlights. We're gonna be doing it very, very scratchy. This is not about smooth highlights because we wanna highlight the fact that this is dented, damaged, beaten up and worn away. And this is a really, really fun way of doing your highlights because you don't have to be that careful. You can just really sort of blot stuff in there. It's a really freeing way to do your highlights because you're not trying to get perfect little lines. You're just doing lots of cross hatching, lots of dings, dents, and it's a really fun way to do it. It's really freeing, quite relaxing, not as stressful as trying to do your traditional um, edge highlighting. It's a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed, enjoyed doing it. But this probably took the longest time. And at this point, I realized that I'd closed down the stopwatch in my iPhone and completely lost the timer. But I spent about an hour and a half on this step on all of the models. I wasn't that careful. I didn't want it to be completely perfect. This was just about getting them you know, better than battle ready and just getting them finished. But it's such a freeing technique to use. It's a lot of fun. You can really see now on some of the models where I've used the white spirit and the cotton buds to really damage the corners of a lot of the orange accents. And that really gives off some really nice quick and dirty weathering. Don't be that afraid to try this. I know there's the natural fear of completely destroying what you've got, but I used a fair bit of satin varnish on the models after the ZANFL highlight. One, to protect it, but two, just so it sucks in a lot of those oil washes and creates a gritty texture. Not as gritty as if we were to use a matte varnish, but still gritty enough just to give it a little bit of tone and depth. But there's nothing wrong with using white spirit and your Q-tips to damage up and create some extra detail and visual interest. It's a really, really fun technique. You probably will rub away some of your base layers at some point, but the more practice you get doing it, the more confident you will be doing it. And it's really fun. You have to try it, really worth it. There you go guys, so that's how you can speed paint an entire start collecting box in the grimdark style, but with a little bit of color to it, just to give it that little bit of punch and visual interest. We still have our monthly miniature giveaway for all of our Patreon supporters. We're still giving away an Imperial Fist Praetor. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you're feeling very generous and you want to get your hands on that Imperial Fist Praetor, then support the channel on Patreon. Thank you very much, guys. Next time I see you, I will be painting Argel Toll, who just arrived in the post. Cannot wait. I'll catch you on the next one.